TRS approached me way back in the day um, and asked me if I'd like to try out one of their guitars, but I already bought one. PRS was always kind of that, uh, when I was younger, unattainable guitars. It was always the top shelf of the guitar shop. It was too expensive. I could only afford the $900 or $800 guitar, and that's if I sold all of my gear to get it. When I finally came across, um, it was an insurance claim. Actually, all of our gear got stolen when we were on tour with Creed in the early days. So we each got a check for the amount of money our, our gear was valued for. It was the first time in my life I had enough money to buy a PRS. So I bought one and um, when I got it on stage, it just didn't, it wasn't configured the right way. It was fine for sitting in the bedroom, but the knobs for changing the pickups and the, the tones were a little different than I was used to. So um, I didn't play it anymore. That's when PRS approached me and asked if they could send me other guitars to play. And um, loved them. Loved writing with them, but I couldn't perform with them. So they said, well, try this guitar, try that guitar. And finally, like, why don't we just design a guitar for you that you like? And at the time, it was just Carlos Santana and myself. And uh, it was a big honor for me. And um, when you can take a company that makes such a quality product and you can form fit it to your needs, uh, it, you know, it holds all the value in the world for me because I can get exactly what I want on that guitar. And uh, my signature model does everything for what I do. What I put on record when I do on stage is what I, that guitar is perfect for me. So it's, uh, it's my favorite guitar in the world. I'm not just, not just because it's my signature model. It's because it's my favorite, it really is my favorite guitar. Well, first of all, we made the American version of my guitar and then we wanted to make an affordable version of it or a more affordable version. And uh, when we came out with the first SC, it got touted as the best value per dollar you could get in the world for a guitar. I saw an ad, a couple of reviews that were along those lines. And then, um, then PRS got sued and we had to take them all off the shelves. And uh, I think it lasted, I don't know, four years maybe. So when the lawsuit was actually finally won and they could put the guitars back out, we did multiple versions. We've done. We've done the American standard version. We've done the American stop tail version. We've done every different finish you could think of. Um, we've done the SC custom, the, the, the three levels of SCs at one point. You know, they would just kind of go up from like a $600 guitar to a $1,200 guitar to a $1,700 guitar to a $3,400 guitar. You know, I, I don't know exactly what the price was, but um, uh, entry, entry level for, for everyone. Um, but they've been, you know, I've had so many people come up to me and have me sign these guitars and tell, them, tell me how much they love them and it makes me feel good that I'm standing behind something, not just because I'm trying to sell something with my name on it, I want to get behind something that is something that if I bought when I was a young guitar player, I would, I would love. And I think those instruments are, are one of the best things I could imagine playing on for that price point. The guitars were made to his specifications originally. I don't think he's ever, you know, second-guessed what that is. They're the perfect guitar for him. Uh, the way that he designed it with the, the pickups and uh, the neck and the body and all that, it, it, it suits him perfectly. The sound, the, the quality, everything is just top-notch. So I think they, they work well together. Both him and the guitar work well together. Normally, I mean, about six or seven different tunings throughout the set. Uh, that can change because they like to add new songs in every day and you know switch it around to where it's not the same set list so it could vary but typically around six or seven different tunings. He does like low action which I typically can get a guitar set up really good for that low action because I like playing them that way myself uh, so it's been something that I've been used to doing for you know ever since I started working on guitars. We, we both kind of like that same action and same feeling uh, the, the tension on the strings, all that, we're pretty similar, so I know that if I set up a guitar to a way that I think it plays nice, I can pretty much be assured that he's going to like it, and then I'll take it to him, and we'll just do the tweaks and, uh, you know, have him play it. Eh, something might need just a slight adjustment, we'll do that a couple times, and then afterwards, yeah, we're set. It's usually a pretty quick process. A lot of these guitars he's played on multiple, multiple tours, multiple albums, Speaking of uh, important guitars, this one definitely is important. Uh, ever since I started work with Mark, this is uh, this is a guitar that Blackbird has always been played on, which you know is 
that's the song. You know, that that's definitely the one that a lot of people want to hear more than anything. So this guitar sounds amazing. One thing that we've noticed is the heavier guitars, Mark really likes the most. I refer to this as Sunburst. Um, and as you can see on Blackbird, there's, you know, Sunburst with the tuning and all that. But yeah, this guitar is, it's top notch. So next will be here, and he's gonna play this next song with this beautiful PRS Monty number. In which, which, which ever one of you gets the loud voice of the break is there, or he just leaves the room, he's gonna hand this guitar to us, and the song is up. And then I don't know. And this is This is like the whole we're giving the guitars away for a lot of reasons. One is it's a great way to show people this excellent instrument and uh, you know just see how happy it makes somebody to win out of that big crowd of people that get chosen. You know, you see the face on the, the person who wins and there's a lot of tears, a lot of happiness, a lot of joy. Awesome. The way I choose is I walk the stage left, stage right, back and forth and back and forth and I'm looking at people and you know there's a lot of people climbing up on shoulders just trying to be you know trying to get the guitar but I can tell the difference between somebody who's just putting on an act versus somebody who's got their eyes closed and is singing with passion and, or some kid who this is the best night of their life because they came with dad to see a show for the first time or something like that. <laughs> That's the thing with the guitar right there. You see your children? The guitar is yours, buddy. Yeah. It's yours, buddy. Yeah. I try to find somebody that this, this is going to be one of those life-changing moments. Like, I didn't play guitar until I got that guitar at that concert. You know, 20 years later, uh, I'm a musician. You know, so hopefully, you know, I try to pick the right person every night. Congratulations. Congratulations. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas, buddy. That's awesome. Right on. Yeah, he was new. Wow, he was watching that. He was going crazy. The MT-15 is my favorite amplifier in the world right now. It's um, another thing is I'm not just pushing the amp because it's my signature amp. Um, I want somebody to buy that amp and just like me be like, this is by far the best amp I've ever played for $600. I mean, it's ridiculous how good that amp sounds for 600 bucks. You know, I, when I was talking with Paul, I said, I want this amp to be, I want it to have a five before the price tag. I want it to be the most $599. Um, so that's what's gonna draw people initially to it. Then when they hear it, they're gonna be blown away by it because this amp is, it stands against a $4,000 boutique amp. I've done the blindfold taste test with a lot of my guitar buddies and I've plugged amps in and then plugged in the signature amp and every single time they pick the signature amp. Little 15 watt amp, it sounds like a 40, 50 watt amp, but it's, uh, the tones are, are awesome. It's not, uh, it's not just a brutal rhythm, chunky metal amp. It's, it's also got a nice lead tone. It's also got a really great clean channel. Um, everything that I need in an amp. Um, and now we're developing the, the 100 watt version of it, which is just something I can play on stage because 15 watts just isn't enough to push my, you know, two, four, 12 cabinets and then, you know, you play in a big room, it's just not gonna do it. So um, that's why we're working on the MT-100 now. You know, walking on stage every single time, it's like, um, I think the closest thing you can relate it to is uh, when you're in, in high school and you're playing on your varsity team, whatever you're playing, and you walk out to the 
championship match. It's that feeling every time. I played soccer all through my life, and um, I remember between playing soccer and being a professional musician, I missed it so much. I missed the excitement of getting on that field and playing. And it was, I always said those were the best moments of my life. And until I felt that a crowd, a room full of people there to see what we've created, that's the only time it's matched that feeling. So that's the only thing I can compare that to. You're playing the championship match and you score that goal or you shoot that hoop and you have that moment. That's kind of what it feels like when you step on stage.